Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Marcin Kirdelevich. I'm a director at uh, Canonical, responsible for channel business development worldwide. Uh, during the track today, there were a lot of technical sessions. You learn a lot about you know, the great technologies that we're building, and I'm sure you're all very excited about that. Now, for this one, what we want to do, we want to bring you a little bit of uh, the real solutions that, uh, that, uh, that we built together with partners in order to solve the real problems for our customers. That presentation, uh, will, I'll, I'll, I'll share a couple of slides with you, tell you about what we do, and uh, we'll also be presenting a uh, customer case study here. Can you imagine we, can, we, we still get this question asked about you know, who is canonical? I just want to, you, you all know, but, but I want to, want to confirm, canonical is, is a company uh, behind Ubuntu. We bring you all those great technologies, all the software, all the tools for you to be able to uh, build the solutions to solve the customer problems in a kind of pretty simple way. Now, each time we, we build those technologies, the proposition we bring, bring to the market is not only about the technology. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to build others great uh, uh, systems without, with, without the partners that we have. And we, th this is just an example of a of, of couple of uh, technology partnerships that we have. We, we partner with uh, large companies like IBM, like Microsoft, like Cisco. But uh, for you to know, we also partner with uh, small, medium-sized organizations, companies like uh, Plumgrid or, or Big Switch. Now, all of that helps us in creating a best offer available on the market. We give a customer a choice to decide about how deep they would like to go with our technologies, how much of Ubuntu technologies and solutions they would like to use. And again, this is a representation of a couple of customers that we have, and some of them use Ubuntu as the Linux OS only. Some of them uh, build OpenStack clouds uh, on Ubuntu. Some of them are using our tools to build um, uh, OpenStack. That's something what we call the a canonical OpenStack. More, there are customers who want to have a fully managed service that we call Bootstack, just uh, so it's in order to, to, to have actually a cloud deployed and managed by us so they can focus on uh, building solutions on top of the cloud. It is a, a, a best offer on the market. And it's not that we're saying that. Uh, the recent survey from OpenStack Foundation confirms that there is a vast majority of uh, OpenStack uh, platforms built on top of Ubuntu. Now, all these builds wouldn't happen without uh, resources available on the market to actually bring and, and, and help you building the solutions. To, to, to solve those problems. And, and for that reason, we're building a network of implementation, implementation partners. We have a global network, partners available in all the countries where OpenStack deployments are happen. So if you're interested in talking to us about uh, you know, technologies, uh, tools, solutions, but also you know, uh, local, local resources available, feel free to do that. Uh, uh, one of our implementation partners is InterCloud Systems, and I would like to introduce uh, Akil Asim, who is a VP of Cloud Services for InterCloud, our partner. Akil? Hello, everyone. This is, uh, my name is Akil Asim. I'm a Vice President of Cloud Services at InterCloud Systems. Uh, thanks for joining the session. Um, I have almost 20, 25 minutes of uh, presentation just uh, going over the real life challenge, which is to how to move your workloads from VMware-based environment to OpenStack. So first, a little quick introduction of InterCloud Systems. 
So we are a New Jersey-based company uh, listed on uh, a public uh, company listed on NASDAQ. Uh, we have three pillars of excellence, uh, first being our software automation and orchestration. We have uh, written hundreds of thousands of lines of code, and our real focus is towards um, cloud-based services. Uh, um, our entire software is born in cloud, so there is no legacy, there is no background. It's everything is, is built from scratch for cloud-based environments. Besides software development, we do a lot of professional services. We have hundreds of consultants across US, and our focus is not only uh, legacy-based uh, professional services. We are building strong teams around emerging technologies, and our focus is really on SDN and um, OpenStack-based uh, deployments. The third one is managed hosting. We are in seven data centers across US, uh, and our focus is, again, private cloud-based services, and uh, we have some limited version of public cloud as well, but the real focus is we enable our customers to adapt um, cutting edge technologies with a, with a hybrid approach where they can have in house resources and they can have access to our public slash private clouds. Um, first, I would like to thank Marcin for inviting us for this uh, important event. We have a strong partnership with Canonical, and the real focus is that we are implementation partner. Uh, we have teams around Ubuntu's um, OS and OpenStack, so we help our mutual customers to go quickly adopt newer and uh, latest and greatest um, OpenStack uh, platforms. We are certified bootstack provider, so um, for any deployments where we take the ownership of the entire cloud deployment and we help our customers to quickly adopt and operationalize the entire OpenStack for them. We are contributing on Juju's Marketplace. I, we think that is a great tool, and it can help our customers to, um, to automate um, um, the deployments on OpenStack-based platforms. Just to give you an example, we have deployed OpenStack-based um, uh, projects literally less than 20 minutes. So it's a great tool, and uh, we think there's an entire great future of, um, of this tool, and we've been uh, actively participating and contributing on this platform. Uh, we are also in uh, Canonical's certified training partner uh, to, to uh, train our customers on uh, this cutting-edge platform. And the last but not least, we have developed our own Convert solution, uh, which is entirely based on Ubuntu's OpenStack um, uh, distribution. And uh, I have some slides to go over it. So we've been talking about a lot of industry trends. Uh, what we believe in, they are no longer trends. These are the real requirements. Increased agility. So our customers, what we are seeing that customers are looking for rapid deployment of apps. It's, there should be no longer uh, need for days and weeks of time frame to just to roll out a new app. Reduce cost, enhance experience, and risk. What we, what we are hearing is that the customers, they are looking for agility, lower cost points, enhanced experience, but not at the cost of security. So security is really important. So we really focus on all these four parameters, and uh, we've been successfully delivering it for our customers. So, so from, from, uh, uh, from today's existing IT infrastructure perspective, we all know that when a user, they request for a change or they want to roll out new apps, whether in DevOps environment or Greenfield, it's not about um, uh, minutes or hours, it's about days and weeks. That's where most of the big enterprise service providers uh, they stand today, and that's where they want to be. It shouldn't be there should be no, shouldn't be any human uh, intervention involved. It should be click and um, uh, operate model where users should be able to go into an internal portal and they should be able to um, get whatever they want to do. But this all comes with a lot of complexities and the complexities are SDN, orchestration, security, protocols, int intelligence and support. So um, we are here to solve all these problems and make it uh, easier for our customers so we can take care of entire of these uh, challenges and become a single point, um, one-stop shop for all of these challenges they face today. So based on these uh, requirements, what we just mentioned, uh, we have built three solutions. Uh, simplified OAM, which is operations and management, integration of VMware and OpenStack, because 
the reality is that most of the deployments are today for Fortune 500 companies. It's all based on VMware. So it should be very simple and an operatable model where our customers, they can uh, feel comfortable um, uh, moving towards open site. So it has to be an operationalized model. Meta orchestration should be a single dashboard where they can uh, manage their entire uh, workloads and their different applications, whether they are multi-tenant or single-tenant. They have to be one pane of glass where they can, should be able to manage their entire infrastructure. And the last one is integration, seamless integration of um, OSS and BSS with this uh, OpenStack-based environments. So, so we're going to answer three things today. What is um, why, what, and how? What, are the, what is the motivation behind uh, moving from VMware to OpenStack? So I like this quote by Jack Well said, change before you have to. So it's not about um, an option anymore. You have to go as a CIO or IT administrator, you have to look OpenStack really seriously and see how it fits into your existing env environment. So the motivation, we have listed a few points that uh, what could be the motivation behind for any CIA or IT administrator to, um, uh, to adapt um, OpenStack. Uh, what the trends we are seeing in the market, uh, most of these IT decisions are no longer made just by the CIO, uh, CFOs, and uh, they are being really involved into these decisions. And they make these decisions as well because cost and speed and um, it, it's becoming really important for, for, for their um, IT infrastructure. So, so your platform should be business aware. Your business should not be built around um, IT. Um, it should be the other ways. Like IT should be built around your business. Um, so the first and most important thing is open architecture. You have um, um, a keynote speech the uh, day before yesterday. There are more than 27,000 uh, uh, developers actively contributing on OpenStack. So it's a, it's a, um, a really decent um, uh, ecosystem, and, um, um, so, and it's ready for, for, for production. So, uh, so open architecture is a really important uh, point for any CIO to make that decision. Reduce cost. Uh, of course, um, um, cost uh, is an important factor when you make a decision to migrate from VMware to OpenStack because there are no more licensing involved. Um, APIs, compatibility of APIs, that's really important. Now, again, you want to build your um, IT around your business. So um, regardless, if you're doing, going through an M&A process, acquiring multiple business and merging them together, Openness and APIs, they're really important. So OpenStack is really open, and you can write your APIs. You can put a couple of developers. They can write APIs, and you can seamlessly integrate any system into your infrastructure. SDN solutions, overlay networking is also getting really important. As you grow and you build uh, multiple data centers, you really don't want to touch your physical infrastructure to launch new web servers, database servers, so SDN uh, is part of the strategy, and OpenStack um, becomes the foundation and platform for any SDN-based um, um, deployments. Um, Non-vendor lock-in. So you don't want to get locked in with any vendor, and OpenStack uh, provides you that platform where you don't get hosed by any vendor for any uh, future plans you have for your uh, IT infrastructure. So with this, uh, we'll get into uh, reality and challenges. The reality is that VM, VMware is going to stay. VMware has all these um, uh, applications, and most of the vendors, they um, only support applications on ESXi. So KVM or Zen, these are fairly new uh, for, from the, from the uh, application vendor perspective. So even though we have successfully uh, deployed applications on KVM-based hypervisors, but still from vendor perspective, from OEM, they support only on ESXi. So that is the reason we, we believe that for now, for like short term, next two to five years, it's going to be a coexistence, coexistence between VMware and, and OpenStack. Uh, In-house teams to support VMware. So there's already teams built around VMware-based solutions, so it's hard to make and bring a change. So it has to coexist with OpenStack. 
uh, learning curve and legacy infrastructure, um, those are also very important factors uh, when you think and decide to have a hybrid infrastructure running OpenStack and VMware. Uh, Fortune 500, they have already um, um, uh, built their infrastructure around VMware-based uh, uh, software. And um, again, uh, as uh, the community gets bigger, uh, we will see more and more KVM-based certified validated design into the Fortune 500 companies. So what we believe in, that future IT architectures will have three components. Uh, public SaaS-based architecture, which is like Salesforce, Office 365, SAP, HANA. Um, you have public cloud. Um, and then what we think is the most optimized solution for large enterprise and service provider is going to be private cloud or private slash hybrid cloud. Now, the next thing is strategy for migration. Um, so once you have made the decision that uh, OpenStack is going to be an essential component of your infrastructure, what, what is the strategy? How do we go from point A to point B? Um, the first step is uh, identification of critical and less critical work workloads. You have to go through entire um, uh, infrastructure, your applications. And what we do is we go in and we put our the entire application into four buckets. Uh, it's a, productivity app, apps, business apps, uh, DevOps, and then you have Greenfield. Uh, what we have learned through our experience that the, most, the easiest part is to go with DevOps and Greenfield applications to move because usually um, it's not really into production. So to build the confidence and trust level, we start from there. And then the next thing is that you cannot forklift, forklift your entire infrastructure, so you need the resources. And that's where private cloud comes into the picture. So you want something fully baked, ready to take the workloads in. So you don't have to go through a six month or year time frame of procurement, design, and data center, space, and power, all that, those uh, parameters which are involved to make those resources available for your infrastructure. Um, and after uh, you have the resources, then of course you need to look into each one of those apps and see what are the drivers and what is their OS requirements. You need to make sure that all of that is, the environment is available on your OpenStack um, uh, infrastructure to, uh, to migrate, migrate those apps uh, on the, into the newer platform. Um, and um, once uh, we go through that validation process, certification process. We want to make sure that we launch those apps into OpenStack-based environment and make sure that it can take the load and um, um, uh, they can be easily uh, launched through, uh, through Horizon and uh, Nova. And you have uh, your customers, they can, uh, they can, they can um, um, access whatever the, the, the key business requirements are available. Um, they are, should be available on the new platform as well. So with this, we get into the steps for migration or slash coexistence. So the first step, like I said, you go through discovery and audit process. Then you go into validation and certification process. And InterCloud has a service we launched uh, almost a year back. We call it POC as a service, proof of concept as a service. And then after that, once we validate, certify applications, on OpenStack, then we get into resources. So private and hybrid cloud comes into the picture that you ha should have enough resources so you can move those workloads into OpenStack. Uh, and of course, last one is orchestration where you integrate the entire new environment with um, uh, OSS and BSS. So POC as a service, so that's after you get done with your audit and uh, discovery phase, POC as a service is we call it technology validation. So what we found out after talking to more than 100 CIOs and CTOs in different verticals, and enterprise and, and service providers, their major challenges when it comes to SDN and OpenStack deployments. Uh, and the challenges are infrastructure resources. So if you want to validate uh, uh, hundreds of applications, you really need to build uh, millions of dollars of worth of um, environment to test and validate. And it's not like a workshop where you come in and you show that, okay, this application can work um, in, in, on KVM or OpenStack. Uh, customers, they want to see real deployment, a replica of their production environment into the lab, which is always multi-vendor, and um, everything should be gelling into each other, and it should be 
um, uh, seamless integration and, and, and because you don't want to hurt your business while you're doing, going through this migration process. Uh, OPEX model. Uh, they don't want to spend millions of dollars just to validate and certify things. So what we do is that we have um, uh, huge resources available for our customers so they can come in and we can, um, so we package it together. We have infrastructure resources, human resources, because uh, even in or any organization, the teams are not really designed uh, in a way which are uh, meeting, meeting with the new, matching with the new um, platform where you need to have network engineers who can code as well. Uh, you need um, application en engineers who can understand storage as well. So we think a different kind of human resources are also needed when you go with, uh, with this uh, new platform. So human resources are also a challenge when you migrate from um, a VMware-based or legacy infrastructure to, uh, to, to uh, private cloud or, or OpenStack-based um, uh, infrastructure. So we, we, we fill up those gaps. We have created packages where you have infrastructure, um, uh, resources. Uh, you can go and get hundreds of nodes from us. Uh, we provide a team, uh, network engineers, OpenStack administrators, and since having a relationship with uh, uh, Ubuntu and Canonical, we have resources where even for customized deployments, we have access uh, to Canonical's teams as well. And the third one is the use cases. They need a starting point that, okay, now you have, decided, you have made a decision, how do we start? What is the first step? So we actually built, um, uh, we did a big um, uh, POC, the case study for uh, a large media company uh, out of New York. And um, the, the, the objective, I know there's a lot of stuff, so you're probably not able to see it, but uh, the objective was that how do you manage your VMware existing infrastructure through OpenStack? How do you um, do interoperability testing? management of VMware clusters into OpenStack? Um, and how do you move your workloads from ESXi-based hypervisors to KVM? So what we did within case study, um, we built three pods for our customer. Uh, one was VMware, VMware 5.0, 6.0, and KVM. And what we did, we basically deployed OpenStack. We managed uh, both pods, 5.0 and 6.0, through OpenStack, and we successfully pushed uh, contrail across the three parts. So you can actually build overlay tunnels connecting all three different um, hypervisors. And after that, uh, we successfully demonstrated um, um, service chaining concept, um, uh, cloud mobility, high availability, and performance. So, and, and after we get done all, with all those steps, we wrote a deployment guide for our customers so um, they can just take that document and give it to their existing operations teams. Okay, go from page one to 100 and just follow these instructions, you will be able to migrate your apps successfully on OpenStack. So just to give you an, um, a low-level design, uh, how it looked like, so you can see uh, 5.0 5 running, 6.0, and KVM, um, and this is all in our data center out of Manhattan, New York, and we give access to our customers through a private point-to-point -point circuit or through a VPN tunnel. So this is the physical portion of it, but from a um, from, um, hypervisor management perspective, you can see um, you have KVM hypervisor running on the top, and then you have two hypervisors running on ESXi, two, no, two pods. So on your left, this is a physical component. On your right, you can see the, that um, we built two virtual networks VNs, a green and red. And in green virtual network, those VMs you see, G1, G2, and G3, they are all across different hypervisors. So that is the power of uh, SDN, uh, Contrail, running on top of OpenStack, which can, you can build your um, uh, virtual networks across multiple hypervisors, and then you connect them through service chaining. There's a firewall in between connecting red and green, so without making any changes on your underlay networking, physical infrastructure, you can create these topologies. So this is just a view of um, OpenStack um, Horizon. You can see um, on your screen, like uh, you can see VMware and KVM based um, host nodes showing up on the screen. So 
uh, so you can easily manage your VMware-based environment, ESXi-based host nodes through OpenStack. Again, uh, availability zones um, running ESXi and KVM managed through one single dashboard. So once you are done with, um, uh, with, the, with the nodes management through OpenStack, the next thing is the SDN. Uh, how do you uh, create those virtual networks across multiple hypervisors and then do service chaining to connect them and to enforce your security policies between virtual networks? So this is an example where you can see that there are two virtual networks, 10.10 and 20.20, .20, and they are across multiple uh, hypervisors on different versions of ESXi and KVM connected through a virtual, fire, uh, virtual SRX uh, from Juniper. So, so that was the technology validation, POC as a service. Now we get into private cloud. And uh, what we believe in that if you really compare that in-house IT with, uh, with public cloud, these are the two major options available today. Uh, what are the issues or what are the challenges when you have in-house IT infrastructure? You have high capex. Uh, you gotta refresh your technology infrastructure every three to five years. Uh, you get locked in with the vendors. Lead times, you want to roll out new applications, you have resources requirements, you're talking about, if not uh, months, weeks of lead times to, to get new hardware in. Uh, IT staff, uh, uh, IT is, we believe in, is becoming a utility, just like you pay bills for your electricity and gas, IT is really becoming a, a utility for the organization, so you shouldn't be having hundreds of people just managing their servers and, 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 um, and applications. Uh, space and power, where do you host your environment um, if it's an on-premises? And then you compare it with the public cloud, which doesn't have all these problems, but they have its, their own problems, which is non-deterministic cost, right? You really don't know when it comes to budgeting that how do you uh, uh, forecast and allocate budgets? And what we see in large enterprise, there are different business units having different, their own individual relationship with public cloud providers. And it's really hard to combine and have a, a one um, assessment of the entire utilization on, on public cloud, uh, cloud platforms. Um, lack of control. Um, it's, not, uh, it's like more of a one size fits all. So when you have customized requirements and you want to have your own um, um, requirements on, around certain applications or, or usage, you're really locked in and you need to go and follow your public cloud provider's uh, buckets the way have, they have designed. Uh, vendor lock-in, we also see vendor lock-in with those um, public cloud. When you put your data, it's, it's free to push the data in, but when you take it out, it's, 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 it becomes really expensive. And sometimes it's built on their own hypervisor, so it's, it's really hard to, uh, to, to, to move your apps running from one public cloud provider to another. Data security and compliance, um, it's another uh, key factor uh, for, uh, for most of large enterprise and service providers where you need um, SSA 16, 17, SOC, or HIPAA-based compliance. You cannot be in shared environment. So the solution, what we believe in, is private cloud. It's not shared, but again, the perception to our customers and the large user b uh, base is that Private cloud is really expensive, right? It's, it's going back to the same place where you were when you had in-house IT, um, in IT infrastructure. But between our partnership with Canonical InterCloud, we have solved that problem. And what we have uh, successfully shown that with our private cloud we call Dpod, you can see the cost price points are really attractive. As your requirements for resources grow larger, our depot, private cloud, becomes really attractive. So uh, the blue line you see here is for depot, our private cloud, and you compare it with, um, we haven't named those uh, other lines uh, on the graph, uh, but these are the major public cloud providers, and the cost you can see is really, it make, makes a lot of sense to go towards private cloud-based environments. So with this, I'm gonna just, I have a few slides to go into our architecture for private cloud. Um, 
So InterCloud Systems, uh, we have a strong partnership with Juniper and, and Canonical. So we're using Juniper's platform. Uh, from physical standpoint, we're using uh, QFX, the top of the rack switch, EX, MX for routing and switching, and their SDN control controller for uh, overlay networking. Uh, Canonical Ubuntu is uh, the leading OpenStack distribution, and we're using what, um, uh, OpenStack uh, through Canonical, and we have optimized the hardware and software, and on top of that, we have our own intellectual property, which is the service enablement uh, platform and our network function virtualization orchestration, NFEO. So from architecture perspective, you can see um, we have an SDN layer, which is the uh, contrail system. Um, then we use Ubuntu OpenStack, Juju for automation, for rapid deployments, and this becomes really attractive for our customers. And then you have NFE Grid, which is InterCloud's product for, um, for the orchestration of virtual network functions. Uh, hypervisor, it's all built on KVM, and we support MASS through Canonical, or OpenStack Distro. Um, from hardware perspective, uh, we are using uh, uh, Juniper Switching Fabric. Uh, we have uh, optimized uh, Ceph distributed storage, which comes uh, with that solution. And we use compute from Supermicro and HP. So with this, the, the last one uh, slide is just to show different models of our private cloud. We call it DPod 100, 200, and 300. DPod 100 is a, uh, literally a quarter cabinet solution. Uh, DPod 200 is a half cabinet, and DPod 300 is full uh, cabinet solution. It's highly dense, um, so you can see that with a very small uh, um, footprint, it can deliver a lot of resources. Now, uh, the beauty of this entire solution is it's available on OPEX model. So from business perspective, you get the same uh, features of public cloud. So it's OPEX model. There is no um, uh, CapEx involved to, to, to use this platform. And um, you get one single um, point of contact for the entire uh, support model. You don't have to deal with 10 different vendors. Since we are Canonical's certified bootstack provider, we take the ownership of the entire solution, and we, we provide 24 by 7 support to our customers. It is scalable model. Uh, it can be deployed in our data centers, the seven data centers we have in the US, and we're expanding. Or it can be deployed on premise and customer location. So uh, just from the density perspective, you can see DPod 100 is one terabyte of RAM in literally 12 RU, uh, 11 RU box. Uh, DPod 200 has almost uh, three terabytes of RAM, and 300 DPod 300 is eight terabytes of RAM in one cabinet. So it's really um, dense solution. And as you go scale up from DPod 100 to 200, it's, it's very like we can help you move from DPod 100 to 200 by adding more resources into it. So it's not that you just locked in and into one platform. You cannot just do any upgrades. So with this. Um, any questions? Um, and also, I would really encourage if you can fill up the feedback form uh, before you guys leave. Thank you very much. Any questions? Sure, please. I'm sorry? Right. So, 30 terabytes. 30 terabytes of storage, yes. Sorry? It's basically our service. It's our service we provide. We have packaged it together. So POC as a service, we have defined the use cases. But if you have any specific use cases, we can always add in. But it's, it's, it's our trademarked our service. Yeah. 
Sorry? I would like to have your contacts after the... Sure, absolutely. We'll pass in the contact, yes. Thank you. All right, guys. I think... Thanks, Marcy.